Hi gang, this is Jerry here from Our Task with my spoon. And a thought for the day that relates to the spoon and relates to my being out and about uh, quite a bit for the last week. I want to start with telling you that I went down to visit the camp of the uh, occupied DC group. And I talked to a bunch of uh, young people there. And I talked to them mostly about why are you here? Why are you doing this? And the answer mainly is that you know, we sense that there's some things that are pretty seriously wrong, but that our institutions aren't talking about it. And we want a place for dialogue about a full range of the big issues that are uh, impacting the future of young people. Well, that kind of makes sense to me. And so next I went around to one of the big institutions, the International Energy Agency. The IEA has just released its 2011 uh, World Energy Outlook. So I was there covering the launch of that, uh, that report. Now, these are not radicals. Uh, these are, are not uh, people who get overly exercised. And um, when I was there uh, three or four years ago, they didn't scarcely even mention carbon, carbon dioxide or climate change. This year, that was different. That was big time different. They were saying, you know, three or two degrees uh, temperature increase, two degrees Celsius increase from pre-industrial temperatures on the planet. That's serious. That's big time serious. But they're saying the door is closing on a two degree future. That unless we begin taking actions right away, we're not going to have, young people are not going to have a future in which the temperature increase is only two degrees. They're looking at scenarios where it's six degrees or more, which is a huge, huge problem. Okay, you know, the same week we've been having uh, the UN climate negotiations again. They happen every year. And again, not much is happening, but there are a few things that are of interest. First, uh, the Global Carbon Project released a report, which was written up in the New York Times in 2010. Uh, there was the biggest jump ever in uh, carbon dioxide emissions. You know, that's going the wrong way. There's a 5.9% increase in carbon dioxide emissions in 2010. Okay, another big institution, China. But China has announced that they are willing uh, to begin conversations about a legally binding treaty on carbon emissions. You know, that's that's potentially a big project, progress. Um, so we got uh, all these things going on and how do they connect, you know, kind of the way that the uh, the Occupy DC people are saying, how, how are we going to deal with all these interrelated things that our institutions don't matter very much or don't handle very well? And I want to recommend to you a book by a Canadian uh, uh, environmentalist, and professor, and uh, uh, energy expert, uh, Thomas Homer Dixon. And he, particularly a couple of numbers from his book, The Upside of Down. The numbers in particular have to do with that spoon that I brought up in the beginning. What what uh, Homer Dixon points out is that there is a connection between energy and climate and the manner in which countries have developed. Because the amount of oil that you put in three big spoons full uh, of oil like this, that is the equivalent of eight hours of manual labor. And, you know, I find it, uh, I don't even like to mow the lawn with a push mower, I'll tell you. So I want to be sure that there's, there's energy available. 
but on the other hand, I know that if we keep burning energy the way we have been, we're headed for a disaster. But people want energy. You know, you think about even a typical gas, a tank of gas for a vehicle, that's got the energy equivalent in it of two years of manual labor. So there's a there's a balance between how we're going to do development and um, you know seven billion people all wanting development that's an important issue and the reality just seems to be that seven billion people are not going to be able to consume energy the way my generation did and uh, uh, that's kind of at the, the nexus of what the the climate and and energy and development issues are, uh, are all about. So um, I want you all to think about that and I'd like to invite you also to see how you might want to get involved. Come to our website uh, uh, www.ourtask.org look at the videos that we're producing and uh, look at the ways in which you might get involved and also send us some comments. You know, there's there's a way to comment at the end of this video, and I'd love to have your comments on what you think about uh, this connection between energy and climate and development. Okay, bye for this time.